We're at the Barclays Center where IBF Junior Lightweight Champion Gervonta Davis announces that he will be on the undercard of the Mayweather vs. McGregor card that's on Saturday, August 26th in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it'll be broadcast live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. We are, we are looking to make a joint announcement next week on um, the undercard for Mayweather McGregor. Um, obviously, Javante is going to be the co-main event, so we're very excited about that. And um, shoot away. I believe I was born for, born for this. You know, um, I don't think uh, I was built into it. You know, I think that you know it's it's either in you or it's not. You know, and I believe that uh, what I've been through in life, you know, it helped me. You know, and it, it keep me um, humble. So I believe I was built for it. Now, Javante, um, you know, in your pre, you know, earlier in your fights, the first few fights on television, you, you, you know, you kind of went out there, you bombed your opponent out of there pretty quickly, and you know, you showed that you could knock guys out. But in your last fight, you showed, you know, excellent boxing skills, and you showed that you have defense, and you could do basically everything that a world champion should be able to do. Now, do you, do you? feel that you want to display more of those skills or are you, or are you trying to excite the fans and keep going out there and getting these knockouts so people can know, you know, how hard you hit or whatnot? Um, I'm just here to do my job, you know, and, and that's put on a great performance every time I step into, into uh, a boxing, boxing ring, you know, and, um, whatever the fans like, that's what we're going to give them, you know, and, and and that's explosiveness, you know, our impact fights. And that's what I'm here for. Speaking uh, about entertainment, I was watching Showtime International in your fight in the UK. And I see the ring entrance and you come out to Michael Jackson, Billie Jean. And uh, it was incredible, highly entertaining. Is that something, a ring entrance like that, can we expect from you going forward? Um, I, believe, I believe that, um, it's gonna get better and better, you know. I believe that um, that's exact. I, I think that's what boxing missing too, you know. And, um, I'm here to bring back all the all all the things that boxing been missing, even the ring, uh, walking to the ring, even in the fights, you know, uh, calling out fighters. I'm really not into calling out fighters, but you know, um, I'm trying to bring back all around the board you know, what, what boxing been missing. Connecting to that fan friendly style for a second, Javante, you've got a knockout rate of 94%. That's higher than almost any world champion today, more than Golovkin, more than Kovalev had. Do you consider yourself a fighter who looks for the knockout? Do you, do you like to bring the hurt to the other guy? Or are you just trying to win, see what happens, and if the knockout comes there, you'll take it? Uh, I'm definitely a fighter that if the knockout come, then I'll take it, but I'm never looking into into a fight that I'm gonna knock this guy out. You know, um, that's actually how, when I first signed with Al Heyman a few years ago, a lot of guys that I was coming up with, they was getting knocked out by, you know, um, cab drivers because they was going in there looking for the knockout and they wind up getting tired and getting knocked out. So I never look for a knockout. I just go in there and do my job and I capitalize on their mistakes. In your weight class, do you think there's anyone who can punch as hard as you? I don't think no one can punch as hard as me in a sport. Thank you. <laughs> huh? I can knock out, knock out McConnell. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about um, being the hardest puncher in the sport, um, and you you've said to me at one point that nobody in the division could handle you. That was before you fought Pedraza. Would a Lomachenko be a dream fight? Would you want that fight? Um, how far away do you, do you see that happening? And how far away would you be talent-wise and ability-wise from winning that fight in dramatic fashion? Um, I believe that the Lomachenko will happen eventually, it just at the right time. You know, um, I believe that Lomachenko, not to uh, say not bad by a fighter, but Lomachenko's still fighting in the MGM that whole 3,400. You know, we looking to fight people that's bringing 
a lot more than 3,400. No distance on Machenko. Um, he's a great fighter. Um, and down the road, we, we will meet. If not, my career still will be successful. <laughs> I'll be on top. I believe that. Now, Tank, you have kind of like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of personality. We see you, you're smiling, jamming to music, but I talked to some of your sparring partners, and when you get in that ring, you turn on the, the animal. So how do you balance the, the two where you're like cool, calm, and collected, but then when you get in the ring, I talked to Jose Vargas and different people that sparred you, and they said it was some work. So how do you make that switch? Every time I step into the ring, it's kill or be killed. You know, um, we in a business where um, it's we're not friendly. Well, I'm not in the ring. You know, and, um, it just a show. It just show what I've been through and coming up. Me, you know, just be able to, you know, um, to release it in a good way. You know, in a sport that I love. You know, so it's out of that or back into the street, so that's why I bring my emotion to into the ring. Right here, Javante. There's a big elephant in this room somewhere. You want to talk about it? You know what I'm going to say, right? You see the hat? No. Philly? Where? Tevin Farmer? Where you at? I don't know where you at. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, <laughs> What's up with it? Is there something you want to tell us? Um, August the 26th. Oh, did you just spill the beans? August the 26th. Oh, we're not fighting Tevin. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Kind of, kind of bouncing off of that, man. Obviously, you know, the Philly people and a lot of people want to see you and Tevin Farmer fight. Um, if you're not fighting him the 26th, when will we see that fight? That's something that everybody's been asking for for some time now. Um, he, um, let me ask that. Um, in, in boxing, you know, Things don't always happen when, when some of us want it to happen. Everything's about timing. You know, uh, guys continue to win. Eventually, they're, they're, they'll meet up. That's how it goes in the sport. Tank's career is going to continue to move forward. He's going to fight the best available competition that is out there, and he's going to continue to give the fans exciting performances. Whether Tevin Farmer is part of that, we'll see, you know. We, 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 we are focused on Tank being the best Tank can be. And, and, and with that being said, going out there and putting on those great performances. Everywhere we go, um, that's all people are talking about is the great performances that he puts on and how exciting that he is. All this, we don't get caught up in just calling names out and all that stuff. And every fighter calls this fighter out, that stuff don't mean nothing. We don't, we don't operate and run a business that way. Now, you guys were in a press tour. Steven, you became a fan favorite. Leonard, <laughs> Connor gave you compliments and he took shots. Javante, you won the tour. Did Connor tell you anything personally when he saw you? He called me a little bitch. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, how did you respond to that? I just laughed at him. I mean, I'm, I was just um, happy to be and be there. You know, um, just at the um, press conference, press conference, it, it was an event, so. It's going to be big, August the 26th. And one more question. You once sparred four people in one day. Tell everybody here what you did to those four people in Tennessee. I broke their nose. Four noses in one day? Yeah. Four noses in one night. How, how did that happen? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> kill, be killed. <laughs> Maybe I'll spare for why is this? Why was this not too soon? You know, just with anything, you know, he's, he's only 22 years old. There's a natural maturation process with anything. You know, he's developing, continuing to developing as a young man. You know, there's an incredible amount of responsibility where he comes from. That, you know, he, so it, a lot comes with being 22 years old. And then, you know, he has a tremendous advantage because 
obviously with a guy like Floyd in his corner being super talented, you know, early on and going through certain things. So he's, he's still learning, he, you know, what's the rush? I mean, he's giving you guys exciting performances, and that's what he's going to continue to do. And, and timing is everything. Timing is everything. Yeah, and, and, you know, it shouldn't be overlooked what an opportunity like this means to, to sort of the education of Javante Davis. You know, there's, you know we, we have not seen an event of this size, you know, in, in our lifetimes. And as a young fighter, to be part of that and to experience that, you know, without having to be the focus, you know, that is an educational experience that comes along very rarely. So when he is headlining in Las Vegas, when he is headlining on a pay-per-view, you know, this will be an invaluable experience, you know, and, and with all the lights and all the focus and all the pressure and all the crowd, it's not going to be something new to him. Martin, who is your uh, like circle of trust that you talk to about preparing for situations like this and having this responsibility? You know, what kind of conversation do you have with Floyd, with Calvin, your trainer, and with Leonard to help you stay focused? And um. I really don't have to um, talk to anyone to be focused, you know, but, but just I know and I believe in my team, you know, every last one of them, to, to my trainer, to my manager, to my promoters, you know, I believe in they do their job and it's up to me to stay focused, to do my job. So I believe that as um, long as I have my team and I believe in my team, you know, I'm, I'm here to take over the sport of boxing. Javante. With the Under Armour deal, um, obviously they're located in um, Baltimore. Um, what's the shared vision for you and them with uh, raising the visibility of your brand and moving forward with it? Um, that's the question, basically. Just what's the shared vision for you, your expectations for them to take your brand? Uh, just to the top, you know, in the ring and out the ring, you know. Um, Actually, I want to uh, be able to come back to not just Baltimore, but all over to help the kids. You know, um, not just in boxing. You know, I want to be able to travel the world, build my brand, build that brand, and um, just help. You know, help with, do what I can. Is that something you intend to be more hands-on with some of the development of the apparel and stuff? Is it, is it certain expectations that you have? For them to meet, um, most definitely. Um, yeah. And I also want to. I also want to. Um, actually, we we coming out with um, um, my clover line coming soon. Before I believe the twentieth of August or the sixth of August. So. Gervonta, um, you know, going back to a point earlier that Stephen said about this upcoming fight being an invaluable experience for you. I mean, the last two fights have been very big, invaluable experiences fighting here and fighting over there in England, your first title defense, which is not an easy thing to do. So, you know, what kind of, what do you take away from, you know, fighting here back in January, beating Pedraza, and then going all the way to England in your first title defense, not just as a boxer, but also, you know, in a mental game and, you know, getting ahead mature, maturity-wise, because you're at 23, two years old, you're at a level mature, uh, mental and physically and talent-wise far ahead than almost any boxer at, that, at this point in their careers? Um, I believe that, you know, um, again, I'm made for it. You know, I believe um, I'm here for a reason. You know, they put me on the stage for a reason. They believe that, that um, I could do it, and I believe I can, uh, I can do it, you know, so. It's all about us believing in each other. You know, um, my team believe in me and I believe in my team and they, they, they move me at a fast pace. You know, and, um, I can't just, you know, turn my back on them like that. You know, I have to live up to what they believe in. We'll, we'll take one more and then we're gonna wrap it up. Anything else? Is there any pressure in that? Do you feel any pressure in having to rise and to move at the pace that it's also it's it's also not not 
if if it was too much pressure, I would let them know and you know. But I believe that um, my team been doing a great job, you know. And um, of course, I've been doing a great job. And we're here to take over the sport. All right. Thanks, Javante. You want to wrap it up, Leonard? Um, like, uh, like I said, we we expect to make an announcement um, next week on what the undercard is going to be, and it's going to be a very exciting undercard. And um, can't wait. Thank you guys for coming out. Really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We're at the Barclays Center where IBF junior lightweight champion Gervonta Davis announces that he will be on the undercard of the Mayweather versus McGregor fight in Las Vegas, Nevada on Saturday, August 26th, and it'll be broadcast live on Showtime Pay-Per-View. New clothing line? Tell us about what kind of stuff. What new clothing? Oh, my, um... The Under Armour. Yeah, it's coming out really soon. And, um, I gotta catch these Under Armour. <laughs> oh, shoes. It's coming out soon, though. Leonard, what do, what do you like about Ted? What does he bring to the table? Everything. He brings everything to the table. I mean, it's, what a breath of fresh air. You have a, a young star like this. He's a, a nice-looking young man, uh, very articulate. Um, and he, and he goes into the ring and he he does his job and he gives you guys excitement. And, and again, I'm, I'm very serious when I say he's the most exciting fighter in all of boxing. Everyone wants to see him fight. So that's a great thing for us to, you know, continue to find ways and opportunities to keep him busy, to keep him on the right platform because, again, he's the, he's the present and he's the future of boxing. And we are very happy to have him part of Mayweather Promotions. You've been with Floyd from day one pretty much. Mm -hmm. What do you share with Tank that you can, that you, you see similar that you tell him to guide him to the right? That's, that's a good question. Um, obviously, I've had the um, great opportunity of being part of uh, Floyd's entire career. And, you know, obviously, you know, so I've seen a lot of things happen in the sport. So, again, we have an advantage because we're able to kind of pass on that knowledge to him so he don't make some of the same mistakes early on. You know, and it happens. And um, so he has, he, has a, he has a very, very big advantage over most young fighters, you know, um, because we, we, there's no worries about anything when we put him in the ring because he's an animal. He's a beast. He, when he goes in that ring, he's all about business. And, and when he steps in, it's just like turning the light switch on. You know, and it's just, for me, to. To be able to see that, you know, I haven't seen that before. I haven't seen that before. It's like he is must see TV because when when you go to a fight and Tank Javante Davis is in that fight, you better not get up. <laughs> you better not get up because you, you look around, the fight might be over. Hey Tank, hey, I see you doing road work with you were doing road work with Drake, hanging out with Drake. How do you stay grounded knowing you have a big fight, you have celebrity friends, different things like that? How do you stay level headed? Um, just know where I'm going in the future, you know, I'm, I'm nowhere where I want to be, you know, just looking into my dreams, you know, I'm just, just taking steps at, after steps, you know, um, again, I got to make my team proud, so, you know, I got to stay focused, stay grounded, and, you know, um, we're about August the 26th. Being a celebrity at 22 years old and, you know, having to hear what, you know, Leonard and Floyd might have to say about what you can't do that normal 22-year-olds do. Is that hard um, to talk about some of the things you can't do that, you know, maybe some other 22-year-old could do? You said, like you said, you don't go walking through the streets of Baltimore anymore, but, you know, can you talk about some of that? Um, yeah, just, like, at first I didn't get that, you know, I was getting bigger and bigger to, you know, um, I can't move around by myself no more. I had to have a few people around, you know, at all times just to make sure I'm okay. Even if I miss Leonard call, I gotta make sure people around me say, look, get up, you gotta call Leonard back because it's, it it's all about business. You know, I gotta stay sharp at every angles. And you know, um, again, it's I'm becoming that, that star, you know, that I always wanted to be. So I have to live up to it. I have to um, stay sharp as a young man. and. Um, Continue to be that star. Do you miss any of that, or does the fact that you are benefiting from your celebrity make up for that, or is it still a part I, of you that says, "Man, I wish I could do this"? I wish. I no, I, I love my new life. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs>
mean, like, you, you didn't have it easy growing up. You no. didn't have it easy as of two, three years ago. Very, now look at you, like, all the celebrities gravitate towards you. Yes. Mayweather, Leonard. Do you ever think this would happen when you were, like, 10 years old, 12? Um, of course, not so soon, but I always knew that I would be a star, you know, um, and I was staying, staying focused, staying humble, you know, just so I can reach that next level. Devontae, do you have a message for the rest of the division out there? Message? I'm the best in the division. That's the message. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite fighters uh, when you were growing up or some of your fight favorite fighters right now other than maybe Floyd or, or some other guys? Um, growing up, my favorite fighter was always um, Floyd Mayweather, you know, um, Adrian Broner. Uh, Lamont Peterson, Anthony Peterson. Um, that's about it. And what about some young fighters that are coming up that are younger than you? What are some guys to look out for? Um, young fighters. Um, we have uh, who, what's his name? Richardson, Richardson Hitchin. Yeah. Uh, I actually Africa. spoiled him for um, yeah Africa. I actually spoiled him for Pedraza. I believe he'll be a champion. Um, he another star. Um, Steven Shakur. Steven Shakur. Malik Hawkins, um, Lorenzo Simpson. Uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of fighters. Uh, I can't name them all, but it's a lot of fighters that's, that's going to be tough in the, in the sport. How do you, you could change champion one thing this? about if you could change one thing about Baltimore, the way where you grew up. If there was something you could go back and change right now with the celebrity you have and the influence you have, what things would it be? What one thing would it be? Change. I don't believe. I, I, um, I just want to help more, not just my city, just that's pretty, just be able to, you know, touch these kids. That's what they're missing. They need someone that, you know, they need that, that person to look up to. Now in Baltimore, it's really, the young kids is going wild right now, you know, so they don't really have no guidance right now, so I really want to be that person to be able to slow them down. Is it what so makes you, it's important that you came from there, that you think they'll listen to you? Can you I believe so. I believe 100% they, they'll listen to me. You know, I, um, I just want to be that person to be able to slow them down because right now they're just going crazy. What makes you so hungry as a champion? You fought in January, then you fought Liam Walsh. This is going to be your third fight, August 26th. A lot of champions aren't doing that, so why are you doing it as a champion, fighting three times a year? Um... I believe that, um, that's an iPhone 7? <laughs> no. It's oh. It's a Google. Oh. But, <laughs> you know, um, I believe in my team. My team has put me on a fast pace. Um, they believe in me. I'm just living up to the hype that, um, you know, and I'm, I'm just ready to fight every time they say, um, you know, it doesn't, I remember, I remember, um, me fighting, I can't, I can't, I remember me fighting. I was just for I just fought on TV, and then Lenny Carr was like, "We got another fight for you, mm -hmm. off TV, but it keep money in your pocket." So I was like, "Yeah, let's do it." <laughs> you know, so. Tank, everyone knows you have power, but very few people here know you can box. Tell me about your boxing skills. I mean, they just gotta wait and see. You know, um. It will surprise anything. Yeah, I, I definitely I was surprised with the Pedraza fight too. So. Speaking about Baltimore. Uh, this question would be for Lennon too as well. When are you gonna give this man this homecoming fight? Everything t everything happens in due time, and trust me, when he, when 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 it happens, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be really really big. And we're, we're in boxing. What we've learned in in order to be successful, everything is about timing and being patient. Everything don't happen when we want it to happen. It happens when it's supposed to happen. So it's just about the right timing. And when he makes that. When we make that decision as a team, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be massive. Trust me. Javante, where's your quiet confidence come from? Because you're not a, a braggadocious type of guy. You don't talk a lot. But when you get in the ring, you, you take care of business. Where does that confidence that. come I from? I love that about him. That's, um, that's how, how I was Straight raised. Killer. How mm -hmm. I was right. raised. You know, I actually bring the, the, the streetness inside of me into boxing work. I mean, into the boxing ring. You know, um, and it was always kill or be killed. What inspires you? What inspired me? Um, Floyd Mayweather numbers. That's what inspired mm -hmm. me. Is this the best and greatest opportunity for Javante to become a pay-per-view star, being the chief support to Mayweather versus McGregor? Of course, because it gives him a tremendous platform, and it gives the, the entire world, because this is obviously a global event, to see Tank. 
you know, and what, what better opportunity, you know, for a young fighter being world champion to be seen across the world by many, many fans, and then they become his fans. You know, with coming off the last performance, which was a tremendous performance, you know, I can't tell you enough how much support and how many fans that he's gained from just the UK alone. You know, just his, 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 his quiet demeanor, how he goes about things, and his reckless behavior in the ring while he just, you know, rips guys apart. You know, that's what the fans want to see, and that's what they're going to get from Tank, you know, uh, for his entire career. And again, I can't say enough. Mayweather Promotions is, is excited. Showtime is excited. And, and I think the media is excited. And the fans, the fans are really going to be the winners in this because, like I said, he's just 22 years old. You know? Leonard, you've been a part of, for Mayweather Promotions, you've been a part of the Mayweather Pacquiao, which to this point is the biggest fight. Seeing the, the build-ups and the press tour for Mayweather McGregor, if you had to take an educated guess, what do you think? Do you think Mayweather McGregor has what it takes to trump those numbers, the Mayweather Pacquiao numbers? We just have to wait and see. You know, I'm not one in predicting, you know, things. That I know we have something very special. That Was it I bigger than you expected? Just No, it's, it's, not, it's not bigger than what we expected. It's just that I just don't predict things. It's just that, you know, we plan for, you know, because we know what we got. We got something very special. This is something that... The fans have been asking for, and it's exactly what we're going to give them. Was it hard to negotiate with the just with the UFC in general? No, not easy? at all. No, it was a, it was very seamless. You know, it was it was a. This is this is great. This is great. It's a great thing. You know, come August 26, you guys are going to get a, a phenomenal event. Tank, there were three people that helped to facilitate your career. One of whom was your coach's son, and, and they're not here right now. How much do you think about them on a regular basis? And if they were here, what would you say to them as kind of a debt of, of thanks? Um, I would just tell them thank you and just look at me now. You know, um, the guys that I did look up to in the gym, you know, they are either dead or in jail. You know, so that's why I call myself the one. Also, you know, I, I believe I'm here for a reason. And also, before you know, um. This whole thing over, I would like to say thank y'all. You know, I'd like to say thank my team, Leonard, Floyd Mayweather, and Al Heyman. And um, again, Javante Davis is the next pay star. I'm taking over sport, uh, the sport, but I mean, um, the sport boxing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the fights.